Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and today I have a video that some people have requested for a little while now. Uh, I'm finally getting around to doing it, and uh, it is my busy time of year, so I need to start doing some production items. Uh, my biggest vending event of the year is coming up shortly, and one of my best sellers is the S-Hooks. So I am going to do a demonstration with the adjustable bending fork that I made uh, quite a while ago. Some people have been asking to see it in action, so you are going to see this today. Uh, I had not planned on making this video today, but I will tell you that in the four years I have been on YouTube, I have never received such a rude comment to a video as I did last night. And I want to go ahead and do the demonstration, but at the end of the video, I want you guys to stick around, especially if you have your own channel and you're dealing with people harassing you online. I want to show you a really interesting way of dealing with those people, and it'll keep your channel in a positive light. But for now, let's get to making these S-hooks. All right, YouTube, this is my adjustable bending jig for anyone who didn't see the previous video. Um, all this is is a 3 8 bolt. Uh, I've since replaced the regular nut with a wing nut just because it's easier to get on and off. I have two pieces of half inch round with a center hole drilled through them so they will ride along the bolt. This is the bending fork. To use it as a bending fork, you don't need the wing nut and you don't need the half inch square. So we'll put those off to the side and I'll show you how this works. This basically fits in the jaws of your vise. You space the two rounds as far apart as you need them to create the bending fork of an appropriate size for your project. The one thing that I will mention is your bolt should be at least as long as the jaws of your vise. That way you can create a bending fork that's literally the width of your vise jaw. So how this works, put this in here like that, and then we'll clamp it down. That is your adjustable bending fork. It's the same deal if you have uh, the type of bending fork that fits in your hardy hole. It's self-explanatory. Shouldn't really need to explain how this works. And I've had people tell me, well, <laughs> excuse me, I have had one person tell me that they made one of these and it was really unstable. Let's talk about unstable for a minute. Yeah, the hammer gets it to move a little bit, but I don't think that's unstable. If you're having stability problems after making this jig, it's probably because your vice jaws aren't closing evenly. That's not the fault of the jig, but let me show you how to compensate for it anyway. All right, guys, so we're over at my big vise. Um, this vise was originally in a professional welding and fabrication shop. It has seen a lot of use, and it doesn't close perfectly anymore. The jaws are not perfectly square to one another. So let's see what happens. I'm going to put this in the vise, and I'm going to crank it down, and this is going to wobble. This is not stable anymore. It's going to move all over the place. So how can we fix that? I've got two pieces of aluminum angle. And all I'm going to do is come in here and cover the jaws with them. Now I'm going to put the vise, excuse me, now I'm going to put the fork back into the vise. my hammer. It's still not perfect, but if you're not beating on it with a hammer, it will do exactly what it's supposed to do. I've got 10 pieces of stock cut for the first size and style of S-hook that I'm going to make. Now, this was the old jig. Uh, you've probably seen jigs like this on YouTube if you've been watching blacksmithing videos for any length of time. Uh, Dirty Smith, he uses something similar to this. I've seen a few others. Uh, in fact, I first got the idea for this jig from Dirty Smith. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep all my material. Uh, I'm going to get the fishtail on either end. I've got ten pieces to do. And then I'm going to show you how to use the adjustable jig with the square peg to replace the need for something like this jig right here.
you want to put a little bit of a lip on the end. Quench the tip. And wrap. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but my forge is getting real low on fuel. I hope I have enough to finish the video. So what we're going to do to create that style of jig from this bending fork is to replace one of the round pins. Now what this is, this is a piece of half inch square with the same cross hole drilled through it. And it's going to give you something that looks like that. Now we're going to address a couple of things. First, how does that become this? Well, this is a half inch square. This is a half inch drive socket. And if you notice, it's almost the same diameter as the pipe on this jig. So what you do is you slide that over your square post and that gives you your bending surface. You need to set your gap between the pin and the socket, and you're ready to go. Wow, my forge is real low on fuel. All right, let's get this done. Let's say you're having the same problem with your vise that I have with this one. It's tight, but this jaw doesn't close all the way. It closes tighter on one side than it does the other. How do we fix this problem so we can get around that and use the jig? Well, here's my solution if you don't have the aluminum jaws. This is a wire tie. Take it out of the vise. Put your wire tie around the part that needs to be tighter in the vise, like so. Reinsert into the vise. socket here. Set your distance between your pin and your socket and then tighten it down. And that will take all of the slop out of your vice jaws. Let's finish the other half of this S hook. Now I know what you're thinking, that's not an S-hook. No, it's not. I bent them both in the same direction so you can see that the results are pretty similar. In fact, this one had a little bit of a better heat on it. And as you can see, this curve is more gentle than this one. This one actually kind of has a flat in it and that's my fault. But I wanted to bend them in the same direction just to give you guys a visual comparison that yes, this jig does the same thing as the other one and it's fully adjustable. All right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the video, but now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes and the real reason why I made this video today. When I filmed my Frequently Asked Questions video, one of the things that I said is I'm trying to do things in an extremely positive way. I want to try to stay positive, keep that kind of energy flowing, and, and be more productive that way. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I received probably the rudest comment that I have ever received in my four years on YouTube. And my immediate, uh, my immediate reaction was to just jump down this guy's throat and rip him a new one. <laughs> and that's why I didn't do that. Uh, I actually slept on it, I thought about it for a little while, 
Uh, I did delete his comment after only being up for nine minutes, but I did really think about it before I responded. So how do you deal with these kinds of people? How do you get them from keeping you down? Well, let me explain how and why this exactly happened. I kept the email transcript of the comment he left me. And I'm not going to address this guy by name, because it makes no point to do that. Uh, I'm not trying to start a fight. I'm trying to prove a point. Uh, he wrote me and said, Sir, I grew suspicious of this jig when you refused to show it working. And I'm going to refer to this guy as Mr. P. No, not Mr. Pete 222. Mr. Pete 222 is like one of the coolest guys on YouTube. This is not him. This is Mr. P. And He's saying that I refused to show how the jig was, uh, how it worked, because I didn't do that in the original video. And somebody had made the comment, uh, kind of crass, a little bit sarcastic, and said, Oh, sure it works, you don't even show it. And my response was somewhat crass and sarcastic, because I believe in equal responses. And I said, do you honestly need a demonstration to figure out how this works? Question mark. And that person never responded. So obviously it was a sarcastic comment. I did a sarcastic response, and that's where it ended. This guy chimes in and says, in reference to that, in fact, you were rudely condescending to one, in one individual who asked you to provide an example of it being used. Uh, no, I wasn't. And that's what you really have to think about, guys. When somebody accuses you of doing something, and that wasn't your intention, it might seem that way to a couple of people out there who are really, really sensitive. Those people don't matter. They can go off and be over here somewhere. They don't affect who you are or what you're trying to, to put out there in this community. And I'm not going to read the rest of the uh, rest of the message, but he basically goes on to say, um, I tried one of these jigs out myself. I built it. It was really unstable. Um, you know, this was wrong with it, that was wrong with it, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Shame on you. And I was like, seriously? And that's the part that got me angry, because he made it sound like I'm trying to just put a bunch of garbage out here for this community, which I really, really care about, because this community has helped me in ways I can't even describe. I've had people come out of the woodwork when I was really down and out, and even though I've never mentioned this in a previous video, there are people who click that little support button and sent me a couple of bucks, especially in the times when I was really messed up financially. And I reached out and thanked those individuals to the people that I can get in touch with. So I know what I'm putting out here does mean something to people. And the simple fact that this guy commented on a video that's got, uh, let's see, 56 comments prior to his, and they're all positive. People were thanking me for the idea, saying that it was brilliant and that, you know, it was really creative. And then, you know, it's got 13,000 views, 357 likes. Only five people didn't like this video. So the more I thought about it, the happier I got. In fact, the anger just kind of melted away. I was laughing at this after a while. So, Mr. P, I deleted your comment for two very important reasons. One, there is only one way you can screw this jig up, and that is to not know how to drill a cross hole properly, or your vise is so screwed up that it doesn't close evenly. That's one of the reasons why I showed the fix for that in this video. But do you realize how incompetent you made yourself sound in light of all of the other comments that were presented to this video? I did this for you so you didn't lose face and have a bunch of people jump down your throat. You're welcome. Because really, anybody can figure this out. If somebody were to say to me, I'm having an issue with this jig, um, here's what it's doing, and they ask for my help, Chances are I'm going to say, all right, well, it's a couple of things it could be. I'll tell you what, send me a picture of it or, or describe to me what it's doing. Try this, try that. I'm going to try to help that person. Mr. P, and this is directly at you now, 
I am not under anyone's employ. I am not your personal customer service department, nor have I sold you a product. If you created something and it doesn't work because you either A, couldn't follow instructions, B, couldn't comprehend on how to do it, or C, just completely didn't take any time to put it together properly, in other words, kind of makeshift craftsman uh, type of deal, that's not my fault. And the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be. So YouTube, this is how I'm dealing with Mr. P. And if he watches this video, fine. If not, it's good advice for everyone else that's out there. At least I think it is. And you know what? People aren't going to think any worse for me because I shot this video and I made these comments. This is how I feel. I'm trying to turn it into something positive that everybody can benefit from. And as far as shame on me, or I should feel ashamed of posting this video out here, Mr. P, seriously? In the last couple of days, I've been averaging about 100 new subscribers to my channel every three days. This past Sunday, I got 61 new people. And there are people who continuously compliment me on my work. Yes, I do have some critics. They ask questions. They ask me, well, why didn't you consider that versus this? And you know what? It's all been constructive criticism. And if you approached this the same way that most of my subscribers and most of my viewers do, this video may have ended quite differently. But I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to put this kind of a positive message out here on my channel because it's the first time I've really felt the need to. So, to Mr. P and everyone else out here on YouTube, I hope you guys have a happy, warm, and safe Thanksgiving. And probably after the holidays, you'll see my next video. So until then, can't wait to see you guys again.